Oh, you made it. You're finally here. Welcome to Half Cocked Tales, a place where we have a great time celebrating science, the social contract, and just plain old congeniality. Dare I say, a place where we seek a path to peace, prosperity, and exploration amongst the stars. What I'm talking about is an all-inclusive society, meaning if you're not on board with the understanding that we all agree to shared rules, norms, and respect, we're not even obligated to be consider your opinion any longer because the social contract is that important to a civil society. I'm your friend and host, Dan the Worshipman Dionysus Man, sipping on science today. I'd like to welcome any new listeners just joining us. We're, we're here having a good time. We hope you have a good time too. Stay tuned until the end of the show. We're going to be discussing salad making tips that will change your life. Wow. Me up. As always, I'm joined by some fascinating guests in the lounge today. Ron, the geologist, apologist. How are you doing today, Ron? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Amber, my sister who loves woo-woo and thinks she's always right, too. How are you doing today, Amber? Good morning. Just woke up, so I haven't had a chance to do anything wrong yet today. <laughs> Got the whole day ahead of you. I know. What am I going to do? And uh, always a great time when we're joined by Jamie Lynn, a druidist who's just so damn good at this. How's your morning going, Jamie Lynn? I'm not far behind Amber. I think I've been up for about an hour, so I've had my coffee. I'm raring to go. Okay, I'm so glad everybody's been able to join us in the lounge today. Uh, and <clears throat> we've got a really fun and informative show brought to you by Trask Industries, mm -hmm. the top name in killer robots and mutant identification. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a long look back today at political assassinations. I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, we're going to skip the science news and snake oil because that conversation, I have a feeling, is going to go very mm -hmm. long. We are going to play a rousing rendition of fact-checking time. Have it's going to involve headaches, <laughs> cooking oils, and feces. Ooh. Ooh. Everybody's nice favorite three things. Okay. Everybody's. Uh, and, of course, we'll wrap things up with a feel-good story about two parrots that just might help save their species. Aww. We'll get to that later. We do encourage everyone to reach out to us uh, over at halfcockedtails at gmail.com or uh, you can send us a text or voice message to 443-499-8253 or obviously you're more than able to drop a comment over on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or any of the hot socials that we're a part of. Yeah. Cutting edge. Okay, everybody ready to start this shindig? Let's let's head over head over to the time machine. Nothing would be better than a look at days of yester in our time machine. In the time machine, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna start in the present and then we're gonna hop around to a few different events. Uh we were we're recording this uh one day after the attempted assassination on uh, former President Donald Trump. Anytime something big happens, you get a ton of misinformation right out the gate because there's nothing so there. Much. And yeah. people want to know. So to mm -hmm. fill the void, um, people come up with things. And I, I don't even, I wouldn't always even say it's most mm. malicious. Uh, Jamie Lynn, we were just talking about, I used to have a former employee that was just came up with the most fantastic. <laughs> lies about themselves <laughs> and not in a malicious way but always like i just want to be the center of attention and want to be talking right and everybody knew this person was full of shit you get a lot of those people too where they just want you to listen to them talk and they want they want to be the them, conversation uh, believe that they have something to right. say right it's about them they just want to be the conversation mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so i don't think all of all of this stuff is necessarily like some sort of psyop like okay well we're gonna so like the uh, oh, right away, people were sharing some video, some picture of some guy like, here's the Antifa activist that <laughs> shot Trump. Right. And it was like a photo of some Italian journalist. Right. right? Like it's some some of it obviously is. Uh, but uh, in, and you hear the gamut of uh, I wish. You know, th thank goodness he he survived thoughts and prayers to right. why couldn't they have been a better shot right right you hear all of those um which i when it's a political thing is it i don't feel like people are wrong 
to have a desire of why won't my political enemy just disappear? Right. Uh, yeah. Especially when if those only. actions, especially when you, when, because people, they, they view their political opponent's actions as rightfully having real world consequences. Mm. And those real world consequences can result in things that might get you or I killed. If we made a decision, like if I made a decision tomorrow that gets a uh, hundred people killed, there's a good chance I might see the death penalty. Right, right. But if a CEO of a company makes that decision, they don't see any pro- they don't see any repercussions. Mm-hmm. So when a politician does it, they don't see repercussions either. A politician uh, s- s- takes away a program that was saving lives. They're not accountable mm-hmm. for those lives that are now lost. So I would not fault anyone who is saying, I wish the shooter had been more accurate. Yeah, I think my sentiment right. is uh, a number of years ago during or well, after a, one of the nasty school shootings, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Trump, I think, said something like, oh, it's a shame, but we just got to get over it. Just get over it, guys. Yeah. Wow. Just get over it. Let's just not get talk. over it. As an educator, that Why is can't we so incredibly this? offensive because yeah. I literally, like, this is my reality. It's mm-hmm. Every day I walk into the classroom and I think, is this the day? Right. It's always got to be in the back of your mind. Mm-hmm. Is this the day that some kid is going to lose it? And if it is, what am I going to do? How am I going to protect my students? What in my room can I use as a weapon? Um, right. Where's my safe exit? Exactly. And it's it's a sad reality that we live in, and it's fixable. This is a fixable problem that our mm-hmm. politicians don't seem to care to address. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really disturbing. We have got some details. We, we, we have access to some details about the, the, the attempted Trump assassination. The, the gunman was named Thomas Matthew Crooks, and he did use an AR-15 Ooh, semi-automatic he rifle. He did. Which, that was the Stephen King comment. Which is the subject. What do you want? Gee, go figure. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the rifle that, that people point to is like, this is a method, a weapon of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. The gun of choice. The gun, yeah. yeah, right? It's the most popular gun for a reason like if you're gonna be into guns like yeah. it's got all of the features that you would want Bells and, and an assault rifle mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. nobody needs an assault rifle you know we just don't need it not unless you're planning an assassination i've scratched my head about this a lot because first of all when we were kids and we're growing up with our gun loving parents and going shooting all yeah. the time you could not own an assault rifle there was a bank Correct. right yeah. right it was in effect, and nobody felt like, well, I can't defend my home. Right. right. No one was screaming, my right. And think about it. We were. We didn't grow up with yeah. the fear that someone was going to shoot up our classroom. Not at all. Hmm. Right. I, I, was, I was still in high school when Columbine mm-hmm. happened, and it was, it was a shock to everyone. Wait, what? somebody got guns in schools and we're shooting kids? Like, holy crap. Yeah. Right. And um, how was that not okay, declaring and call? How are we still talking about an AR-15 that right. now almost took out a presidential candidate? That should have been the right. wake-up call, but no. Mm-hmm. Should have been. And Columbine yeah. happened before the assault weapon ban got dropped. Wow. When they did Columbine, they couldn't have an AR-15. Wow. G. Bush Bush Jr. Uh, got that. Yeah. Did, did it fail, should, should say failed to renew it because it was a... Uh, right. It was a length of time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a permanent right. ban. <coughs> Damn. Excuse me. Ooh. Back to this assassination. Uh, obviously, and I alluded to it earlier, like th- some of the disinformation right away was like, obviously, this was Antifa. <laughs> and uh, uh, J.B. Lynn can attest to this. My <laughs> my first my first thing out of my head, my mouth was, you know, uh, if this was Biden they would immediately be running around saying that this was actually a, a deranged liberal shooting at mm-hmm. Biden or, right. or a, yeah. a psyop mm-hmm. false flag yep. to make Biden look, look like a target, to make uh-huh. the other side look bad. And I lamented, I said, I, I really don't think the Biden team would ever do that. 
No, uh, I doubt it. However, the information coming out about this kid is that he was a registered Republican. Yeah. But he did give $15 to a liberal group in 2021. That's, that's oh. huge. 15, oh. 15. Mm-hmm. That's life changing right there. That which, seals it. He's woke. Which honestly, with the given data and evidence, I got to claim this guy's a centrist. Yeah. Yeah. A Republican giving to left leaning causes. I've got evidence of both sides. Put him in the middle. Does it matter? The question I'm putting to all of you is, does it matter what the attempted assassin's political affiliations and reasons? Does it matter what his reasons and intent was? I would say no, absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, if you're angry enough, I mean, you got to look at the reasons why this person, I think, felt the need. Okay, wait, now I'm rethinking my thoughts. Um, I don't think it should matter. (laughs) Ah. Who? I know, I know. Um, but there's a reason, and it comes down in this particular instance, it's political rhetoric, right? He's he's heard so mm-hmm. much stuff, but if you look at the core, it doesn't matter if he's left, right, or middle. He's a disturbed person who is believing something being fed to him. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think yeah. as we go through yeah. the years of, of uh, other assassinations, it's just this like political fervor. This is the first time, and as we hit that time machine... Uh, find out. But I think this is the first mm. time that the political um, animosity and and vileness is like more than uh, con- promoting violence has never been to right. this extreme. In living memory. Mm. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. In, in, in the America that we all have been in, this has not been a thing. You can't watch gangs in New York and, and, and not see. True. The, the violence yeah. that was in the 1800s, Very, you know, yeah. it happened. No, that's true. And that's a lot of fervor um, gets people blown up, shot, everything. Yep. And to me, that's why it's so scary, because if you look back at enough history, you know, it, it humans can be awful to each other. Oh, yes, we're great at the that. The fact that that's we had this peace for so long. Yeah, we've had peace in our lives for so long, and the pendulum is now swinging to violence. And it's well, awful. peaceful coexistence probably isn't the equilibrium of human society, unfortunately. Violence probably is. Yes, yes, which is why I desperately want to keep the republic, but I, I, it's, it's, it's <laughs> slipping away, right? It's, it's hard to do. It's hard to pull. It off might not be our nature for for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a terrifying world that we live in these days, and I don't understand why we're still, as a society, giving into this divisive rhetoric that we're being fed, and why we don't actually come together to protect each other. I don't know. It just is so. But that's just it. Is in this kid's mind, he was protecting us. Mm Yeah. Right. He is coming together to protect us. Yeah. I mean, I guess in his mind, that's true. Look at look at Pizzagate when they thought that a pedophile (laughs) ring and they pushed that idea that a pedophile ring was being run out of a pizza place until a guy who truly believed it went in and killed people and no pedophile ring and no basement. I bring that up. That pedophile ring was run out of. Right. Not even a basement in the store. And I bring that up because this past week, the 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 evidence and documents of the Epstein and Maxwell court cases mm-hmm. keep coming out mm-hmm. more yeah. and more. And the evidence looks pretty damning. Like Trump is a pedophile. Yeah. Pretty bad. And this it's, so this Republican bad. kid. This Republican kid decides to shoot him. I think that connection is very valid. Yeah especially in light of things like Pizzagate. Like, people on the right love them or hate them. You cannot tell me that there are plenty of people that genuinely have this fear boogeyman of pedophiles, and they do want to protect kids. They do. They they have it in them. They want to save those kids. They love those fucking kids, and they know those kids shouldn't be molested. And very often, those that feel the most passionate about that and take these kinds of measures tend to be victims themselves. Correct. Right. And that, and that's this, a very right. important layer that we often yeah. 
you know, skate over Mess. or don't acknowledge is that these people are acting from a place of severe trauma and pain. And, uh, you know, so yeah. it's like, what else are I they think, going to do? I think Amber hit on something there, too. And I think we can point to it um, throughout other shootings. But this kid was definitely bullied. They interviewed some yeah. of his schoolmates. He right. was heavily bullied. Um, and I know that, that Crumley um, kid whose yeah. parents got convicted, he was heavily bullied. So to Amber's mm-hmm. point, you're, mm-hmm. you're suffering through something and, you know, you're going to take control for once. Mm-hmm. Right. And the only way you feel you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In that kid's self-image world, this this could have been. This could have given him a very big why did I have to go through all of this? Right. Mm. To be a big hero, that's why I'm going to be the biggest hero. I, I'll give my life. I know I won't make it out of this. Right. Right. I guarantee that kid had no exit had, strategy. Yeah, this no. was his right. suicide. Well, it, this was his suicide. He had um, explosives in his vehicle. I read in one article. Yes. Or, or dangerous yeah. materials or something like that. It was, so, you know, he definitely, I don't think he intended to come out of that. And, you know, I don't know, a suicide by hero. That thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and will history look back at this as uh, an analog to Project Valkyrie? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, good point, Ron. I was I was saying that to Jamie Lynn yesterday too. Like, you know, every time they tried to kill Hitler and failed, mm-hmm. it just made him even more even sure. More powerful. We were literally saying, and didn't we just see something? The on hand the news of God that said Trump's ratings are going up now. Even uh. more. You know, that that triggers my conspiracy theorist. Mine too. Mm. Mine too. Oh. Have you ever, watching some of the video of the incident, have you ever seen a more nonchalant um, Secret Service during an active shooting? Yeah. They, and, and during the evacuation, right. they're pausing for photo ops. It was weird. Something's weird with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. It came up, so so we're definitely going to shift over there. Uh, I'm going to link to the BBC article. They've got a picture mm. of this this strip of land, and it's got they 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 even put Trump's stage got a nice red dot, and where the law enforcement snipers are, and where the gunman is. <laughs> the fact that they didn't have that building cover covered it's incompetence at best. Right. What the hell? They're not even doing their job. If yeah. they're not covering that building, what are they doing? Right. Yeah. What are they doing? You, there's no way you can tell me when you look at these pictures and you know that their job is to look for snipers and shooters ever since JFK, at mm-hmm. least. And there's a rooftop 150 yards away. And there, one of the articles says that there were people that saw the, the guy climbing yeah, the side of the building him yeah. and the like cops. pointing them out to the And cops. they were ignored. With a gun. Yeah, it it definitely really makes me wonder because the question. it does, doesn't it? Just wait for the Oliver Stone movie about it. That'll right? tell you the truth. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Oliver Stone, get on it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Suspicious. There's just it's... enough to make you go, ooh, maybe. I also, Devil's Avocado. Mm-hmm. Uh, there we go. I also would like to point out this could just be incompetent. Absolutely oh, could. Which is also Probably very, is. very frightening. Like <laughs> right. <laughs> what I'm what what I and I had a conversation with somebody else on Facebook that was that was being really uh glum and I told him, uh, hey, if if you are really look <laughs> what's the best spin I could give you? Hey, this might inspire other people to try because the secret <laughs> service are so bad right this might put the spotlight and they're like wait it's, what they don't check all the rooftops it's that in easy? a radius it's that easy that's funny well and that's right this is a 20 year old kid not not a not a trained sniper if it had any military training right. in in in, sh- in long distance sharpshooting i probably would have succeeded. i mean 150 yards um, is nothing for a, a, a trained sharpshooter Right. Well, and the only reason he didn't kill him is because he didn't have a scope on said rifle. Mm-hmm. 
if he'd had military training, he would have had a scope. Yep. Right. Scopes aren't illegal. <laughs> AR-15s aren't illegal. This is why it, this was just a suicide attempt and wasn't like a trained hired assassin, yeah. which I, I think if, if either side hired a really good assassin it would just be done right, right? that's why that's why i don't think biden's behind it yeah. like it would have it, yeah, be been done deal then right this yeah this is clearly a disturbed kid who for for whatever reason although i still say if you i i know we're gonna probably talk about the one of the kennedy assassinations and how um there there was a patsy was his name lee, Har- lee harvey yeah always get a patsy so what if this kid was the patsy and well, they killed it they killed him we'll never know for sure exactly that's exactly. my conspiracy theory <laughs> you know that's a really great so. point and it's been brought up before how a lot of these assassinations get told as the lone gunman mm-hmm. uh-huh. which is x-files like the lone mm-hmm. gunman like it's been a known thing for many years that it tends to be the the official narrative tends to be Oh, it's just one mm-hmm. crazy person. Right. And this already fits that yeah. perfectly. Yeah. Already. Here we are. We, we're 23 minutes in the recording and we, <laughs> and we're there. We've already t- t- covered that. Right. right. And, and it's like, wait a minute. I, you know, I, I totally agree with you, especially when you bring up secret service incompetence. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that uh, pe- people saw it, reported it to the police. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened. They had one job. Yeah. One job. Yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> uh, though, though, I hate to say this, but incompetence is something we have been seeing yeah. from law enforcement. Yeah. Look at Uvalde. Oh God. Uh-huh. They That's right, the like, I my first thought is like a cop sees a guy with a rifle climbing up on a roof at a presidential uh-huh. rally. Of course, the cops going to investigate. You would think. And then I then I think. No, Dan, that's what you would do if you were a right. cop. Right. These cops are, <laughs> turns out these cops are bigger cowards than you. Yes, I thought I was too big of a coward to be a cop. Right. Turns out I, I'd be a pretty heroic cop. Right. <laughs> or you have some secret service who are like, hey, you know, uh, we're going to turn a blind eye because we don't like this guy either. Uh, <laughs> oh, Ron, it got dark. See, see, and this is, but I, I love that thought, Ron. I love that thought, <laughs> yeah. Ron, because... Oh, we don't see that it guy over there. Nah, no big deal. How guy? What guy? complex these things are yeah. and how in a real world scenario, there's so many factors that go into how it actually ended up playing out. And nobody's omniscient. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we were we were just talking about Athelstan and his brother died four weeks into their feud over who gets to be king. And we don't even know how the brother died. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm sure it was natural causes. Okay. Like, like how can, like here we are in real time with all these cameras, access to all this data. And we actually still will probably never know the full truth yeah, right? of what happened here. True. There will be movies made. No doubt. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No doubt. If Trump wins, there will be mandatory viewings of the <laughs> movie. <laughs> it will be the new pledge of allegiance. Damn it. Watch this film. That means I'm going to have to show it in school. <laughs> For sure. Amber, as a literature teacher, you better get oh. ready to start teaching the art of the deal. I mean... <laughs> Your list of approved books will be shrinking. Oh, it's already shrinking. <laughs> okay. I'm already not allowed all to right, teach all right, history. All right. Okay. It might hurt uh, someone's feelings. We... Can't hurt teach the history. Right. Oh, right. Is before before we start talking about some of the historical uh, moments and incidences of this, is there anything anybody wanted to to bring up before we move on from the attempted assassination of Donald Trump? Is there, any, okay. is there anything else? <laughs> yeah, I think we've covered a lot of the the, the thing. Everything I wanted to talk about was talked about. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, there. There have been some successful and unsuccessful political assassinations in American history. Obviously, the big two are uh, Lincoln and Kennedy, right. mm-hmm. John F. Kennedy. Um, and when I say incompetence, like look at look at Lincoln. Lincoln formed the Secret Service just before his death, 
he had a military uh, bodyguard assigned to to him, mm -hmm. and John Wilkes Booth was planning on having to fight that guy. But that guy was like, "Oh, there's too there's so many military people in the crowd. Fuck it, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm not." And he pops off to do whatever. And Wilkes Booth is like, ha cha! Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'll just waltz on this door. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, stuff goes wrong. And Kennedy, they were like, let's put this bulletproof glass on your convertible. And he was like, nah, people in Dallas love me. It won't look good. Right? It won't you know hurt I mean? my like, image. These, these, these decisions that, that could, could not be related. They are not related. When JFK made that decision, he had no knowledge and connection. Mm. No, no, him making the decision to choose that car mm -hmm. was was completely unconnected to everything else everybody else was doing. But it just happened to be the decision that allowed for them to do what they wanted to do. Yep. Right? Like, ah, we don't know. We don't know. Anyway, I want to talk about some of the the lesser big ones. We'll start with Robert F. Kennedy, JFK's little brother. Okay. Uh, the, nine kids uh he was the uh jfk's attorney general he was a known figure in in the states he was very like his image was part like with his brother people if you knew jf who jfk was you knew who rfk was right right, right. uh after jfk got assassinated rfk steps right in becomes a senator uh in new york 1964 and in 1968 in the middle of uh, civil rights struggles, the Vietnam War breaking out. Uh, RFK announces, "I'm going to run for president," mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he quickly gains a large following. Uh, young voters, black voters, Hispanic voters, uh, all loved him because he's big on civil rights, social justice. He opposes the Vietnam War, very much a people's kind of candidate. Yeah. Uh, and Ju June 5th, after just after midnight. He got done giving a victory speech celebrating his win of the California primary and a 24-year-old Palestinian named Sirhan Sirhan found him in the hotel and shot him several times, three times, and he died the next day. Damn. Uh, that, he did not get replaced by uh, uh, a viable candidate. Nixon won. He's running. Um, yeah, that ushered a Nixon right into the White House. Yeah. Assistant. Thank you, Sirhan Sirhan, for that. Lame. Um, yeah, it. Uh, Hubert Humphrey ended up being the Democratic nominee. Mm. Uh, That's he was right. the incumbent vice president under LBJ, and uh, he lost. Uh, so that was an impactful assassination. Like political assassination as a tool works. Yeah, yeah, it really messes with <coughs> people's me. uh, emotions. It, it, get get this, and this is this is wild. It works in a republic, in a democracy. Mm. It it has less effect in a dictatorship or a fascist mm. rule. And I know that 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 might sound strange at first, but when you unpack it, it if you if you kill Putin, Putin dies tomorrow, there will be a power struggle, mm -hmm. but he will be replaced with another authoritarian mm -hmm. running a fascist the authoritarian system remains. regime. The system remains, right. right? You have to have a revolution. Not an assassination, but in a republic or democracy, you can do it with an assassination mm -hmm. because people will get disheartened right. and not vote like that next person. Right. Like if, if this is succeeded and Trump dies and J.D. Vance is, gets the nomination, right. he won't inspire the same fervor no. that, uh, the fever that dream their, their is broke. hero. Right. 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 And that, weirdly enough, people who are on the left, let this be a shining thing to think about. Biden doesn't have that problem. 
because it's more of we don't want that fascist asshole to take over and 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 ruin our republic mm -hmm. and end our democracy. Mm -hmm. So if Biden dies of old age tomorrow, <laughs> everyone who's voting for Biden will still vote the blue ticket. Absolutely. Everyone. Yeah, I know, I know, I know the troll bots, the Russian, the Russian farms and the North Korean well, they've farms been busy. are working overtime mm -hmm. to be like, I'm a young person and I just don't want to vote. Mm -hmm. Hey, young people, you shouldn't vote either. I know that. But the people I talk to and interact with, at least in my social sphere, everybody's like, yeah, I don't care who, who it is. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and there's been a lot of people talking about how Biden should, um, like, resign and let Kamala take over the presidency and then the voting would go for her. Yeah. And that's been posited by quite a few people out there oh oh yeah i'm i'm well aware that the news yeah. cycle has <laughs> been dominated oh, yeah. with anti-biden shit all while the actual facts and data of trump's being a pedophile has been coming to light and been ignored <laughs> right like why right. are we focusing on the real truth here don't look over here look right. over here instead even even MSNBC's focused on yep. it, like the considered the most left wing of the channels. And they're like, should Biden drop out? Like, what are you doing? They're all after <laughs> yep. the clicks and the views. Which, you know, is, is why this information is coming out right now. Because that way we can be distracted from it. And they can say, well, we, we released that information and you just didn't pay attention. Hmm. Do you think it would be impactful? If this kid had uh, like a, a what, they, what do they call him? His papers, his, his manifesto. Writings. Manif mm -hmm. There you go. If this kid had a manifesto and he was like, "Trump's a pedophile," all this Epstein data came out. I, I had to kill a pedophile. Would that would that move the needle no. with Trump's uh, supporters? No. no, nope. Because then that would definitely nothing be an Antifa person. That was definitely Antifa. And if you think about it, we don't even need someone else to say things about Trump. He's already right. said it himself. He right. has revealed blatantly who he is. And they Believe still him. ignore him. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like they ignore him right out of his mouth. So I don't think there's anything anybody can say, which is so, incredibly frightening. Sirhan Sirhan, who assassinated Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, stated at his trial that he did it because Kennedy was pro-Israel and mm. he's a Palestinian. Okay. Interesting. I didn't know that bit or didn't remember that bit. Yeah. The, believe it or not, like it, a lot of the fascinating information about Robert F. Kennedy's assassination is Sirhan Sirhan and uh, the fact that he's he's had like psychologists declaring him uh uh like really met in a messed up mental state mm -hmm. uh suggesting that he may have been influenced by political events and his personal experiences trauma in the middle east but uh others have claimed that he he was like part of some government mind control or well i should say at best they they're claiming his mental state would be consistent with someone who was manipulated hmm. mentally mm -hmm. uh, interesting and they they've tried to get him out a couple different doctors have tried to get him out he's still in prison i believe gavin newsom just denied his parole 2022. yes 22 i yep. didn't know that yeah 20 that's crazy 2022 yeah wow yeah he's still he's still in prison for for killing uh robert f kennedy however uh the guy who the the next one we're talking about let's talk about George Wallace. Do you do you guys remember George Wallace? Oh yeah. Is that the Braveheart thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <it's> really <laughs> One and the same. Um, right? Wallace is yeah, Wallace. Yeah. I mean, you know, Wallace, Wallace, what do I know? <laughs> Wait, wasn't wasn't William Wallace also assassinated? <gasps> uh, no, he was drawn in court. Connection. 
the connection is legit. Okay, well, I mean, if your political opponents catch you and draw and quarter you, is that is that not a political assessment? I would say um, so. Yeah, actually, I would call it one. A political dismemberment. <laughs> I mean, they use the things that are available to them, right? So, uh, right, right. All right, Amber. So I'll give that to you. William Wallace. <laughs> yes. But we're, we're not talking Scotland. Oh, okay. we're, we're, we're still here in, in the United States. Um, he was running for president in 1972. So four years, the next election cycle after RFK. He was a huge segregationist. He was governor of Alabama. Racist motherfucker, right? Yep. What a uh, time. He, he, was he the guy he that was blocked the schoolhouse door? Yes, he was. Wow. Yes, he was. Mm-hmm. He was He was an advocate for states' rights. Uh-huh. Uh, he legalized uh-huh. racism. And his opposition. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It, usually, it, it is a dog whistle, mm-hmm. and it always has been. This is, yeah. So, um, yeah, totally and opposed to the civil rights movement. And he decides to run for president. And he's gaining steam and momentum, and he's make his makes a campaign stop in Laurel, Maryland, on May fifteenth. And a twenty one year old from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, yeah. named Arthur Bremer, Lone Wolf, shot mm. Wallace wow. four times, wow. wounding three three other people, including Sir, Secret Service agent and a state trooper. Yeah, a lone wolf. Interesting. Um, Always, Wallace got critically injured. Bullets lodging in his spine, which resulted in a permanent paralysis from the waist down. He spent the rest of his life in a wheelchair. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, they 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 did fear for his life, at, but after several hours of surgery, uh, he managed to survive. Uh, and he kept running his campaign from the hospital bed, but his momentum had been affected, cool. and he got some sympathy votes, but he he didn't even get the nomination that year. Wow. Hmm. Of course, your momentum would be affected. That's pretty, pretty major. But, but he did win re-election as governor. <laughs> and served until 1979. Oh, there you <laughs> on the racism ticket. <laughs> and on the racism ticket. It's said that Bremer's motivation was driven by a desire for fame and recognition oh. rather than political ideology. Hmm. Huh. They published a diary. Uh, that revealed an obsession, obsession with achieving notoriety through assassination. Hmm. Interesting. Sounds suspicious to me. Yeah. Sounds exactly like the kind of diary you would want the guy to have if you wanted people to just close the books. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> well, it says right here he just wanted to get famous for killing somebody. Case closed. Case closed. We don't have to look at this anymore. <laughs> This guy, Bremer, was sentenced to 63 years in prison, reduced to 53. He was actually released on parole in 2007. Oh, wow. So the guy who tried to kill George Wallace, out of prison already. Hmm. The guy who killed RFK four years earlier, still in prison. Bremer's been out almost 20 years. That's crazy. Hmm. Conspiracy much. You shoot a racist to get a little bit of a pass. I'll allow it. <laughs> right. And the racists live to tell another tale. The uh the some some <laughs> other non uh United States related ones, um other you know, William Wallace. We already touched <laughs> on that. Uh do you remember or know anything about uh Indira Gandhi? Mm-hmm. She was the prime minister of India yep. office. Yeah, from 1966 to 1977, and then from 1980 to 1984. And she was the daughter of the daughter of Jawaharlal Nehru. I'll take your word for it. Uh, <laughs> India. Her name's Indira Nehru. Anyway. She ousted a uh, a radical Sikh priest. He was very powerful and had his, they called it Operation Blue Star. Um, 
and she she basically supplanted him from his temple. Uh, right. Hold on, uh, I want to I want to refresh it real quick. So yeah, yeah, like the the temple complex was turning kind of into a fort, and they were getting like uh, guns, you know, real real David Koresh kind of stuff. And um, after bad negotiations, she ordered the Indian army to take the temple and remove the guy, I think it was Bin Dranwali, uh, remove him and his supporters from the complex. And they used heavy artillery, Ooh. tanks, uh, and wow. all flew out. in there. And all out. Damaged and destroyed a lot of the temple, uh, and including a big shrine and, and the Sikh library. A lot of Sikh pilgrims died in, in the, the conflict. Um, the, the number of casualties remains disputed. Uh, but it could be uh, from the hundreds to maybe even the thousands could have wow. died in this. Wow. Um, she so she got accused of of using that for political ends uh, to present herself as a hero to win the elections in 1984. Uh, and of course, uh, Sikhs all over the world were like, "What Not did happy. you just do?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, two of her bodyguards were Sikhs oh. and they had been with her since the 60s. Yeah. So like she knew these guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She spent her days with they them. Were and she did not for a second think that maybe ordering the army to <laughs> destroy a Sikh temple and a bunch of Sikh pilgrims mm-hmm. just to get at this radical and his soldiers. Mm-hmm. She she did not calculate those costs. Maybe and some consequences. These two guys, one pulled out, a, <laughs> right, right. One these two guys. One of them pulled out a gun. One of them had a machine gun because he's the prime minister's bodyguard. Yeah. And she was walking through her garden on her way to a television interview, and they just lit her up. Wow. wow. Thirty. They shot 30, 30, 30 times. They shot at her twenty three. Mm. Uh, sorry, they shot her thirty times. Twenty three passed through her body. Seven remain. Wow. Uh, they 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 fired thirty one shots. They only missed. Uh, so they were pretty close court. So 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 she court. died. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Indira Gandhi died from from those wounds. Damn. Rasputin wouldn't have. <laughs> that was a political assassination, Rasputin. Indeed, it was. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, should. I don't think there's time to get into that because uh, we do want to watch <laughs> a whole to other story. Um, yeah, right. I was like, oh, yeah, let's talk. <laughs> Didn't plan on that one. I was going to end. <laughs> That's a rabbit hole. <laughs> this, this next one. Can um, I just a, a quick aside? Right? Um, this yeah. was in 1980 something, you said? 80, 84. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, some of you were just babes, but I do not remember. Was Amber, were we that? On a like, how did it? How do I not know the story of Indira Gandhi? Like, how of our history? Uh, have we always the, been taught poorly? I know it happened, but we were busy watching Gremlins and Goonies that came out that year. I mean, come on, eighty four. We were <laughs> freshmen in high school, like, or at least I was a freshman in high school in eighty four, right? Well, I no. would have been I about was middle seven, school. Eight. Eight. Okay, I was middle school. Yeah, I was in like seventh grade, seventh or sixth, seventh, eighth grade, somewhere in there. And okay, so that might not have made an impression at the time. But why were we not taught this in school? Oh, because we're not taught anything relevant in school. We're not allowed to. Wait, the mm-hmm. one of the most powerful women in the world getting assassinated? Why would that be a thing? Right. <laughs> And maybe Why you talk? I mean, no I'll deal. be honest, they might have taught us in school, but I didn't and pay that much attention in high school. I mean, maybe. Um, maybe. So <laughs> Amber, I may be wrong, but I didn't have a lot of teachers willing to, to really go in depth in, in current events. Yeah, right. Right. That's true. It's, it's absolutely true. We didn't have a lot of current events. <laughs> discussions um, well you're walking through a minefield yeah you, you know those kids are going to go home and say yeah. well my teacher said Indira Gandhi got killed and that was a, a tragedy oh, she and deserved like, it 
We are Indira Gandhi. We're Sikh. We hate her. Right. We're Sikh supporters in this house. How dare your teachers say that? Right. Yeah. Well, that is the problem now. Why we can't talk about anything of any kind of substance in schools. So we do it on podcast. (laughs) There we go. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's let's stop talking about assassination and let's and play some fact checking time. Woo-hoo. All right, in the hot seat this week. Just some character assassination. <laughs> Here we go. What do you know? It's fact checking time. Will you believe or be deceived? It's fact checking time. Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick the needle in my eye. Here's the proof that all the kids call fact checking time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fact Checking Time, the news show quiz that tests your ability to tell the difference between a news story and something the media has actually deemed worthy of a true fact check. Now, let's get to the game. I'm going to present to you a series of events and stories that were in the news or on social media, uh, just on the internet in some way. But only one of them has been fact-checked by a media outlet. It could be an article, it could be a media post, it could be an interview quote, it could be a tweet. But only some of them were fact-checked. You'll have one minute to ask questions. Amber, you are in the hot seat today, playing for the co-host of the Half Cocktails New Shorts, Poncho Cat. Whether you win or lose decides if he gets wet food or dry food for dinner tonight. Are you ready, Amber? All right. No, but let's do this. The pressure is on. All right. Either oil tankers in China haul both fuel oil and cooking oil without cleaning. (laughs) Or chicken nuggets contain silicone oil as an ingredient. You have one minute. Okay, China oil. Um, is it is this oil being shipped to other areas of the world? Uh, this is oil carrying. These are trucks carrying oil to Chinese companies. Um, they. Uh, so what? The I I, does I, I have no. Okay. Um, yes. Yes. I have. I have no information beyond that. Okay. Um, what other question could I ask? That's a rough one. Chicken nuggets. Um, who's the manufacturing? Is there like a specific company attached to that story? McDonald's. Uh huh. Um, the real McNuggets. The real pink slime. Uh, hey, I sure love that chicken. video. And I still eat them. What does okay. that say about me? Uh, That's time. That's <laughs> okay. Almost Soylent Green. Um, which one would we have fact checked? I hmm. think we fact checked the chicken nuggets. You are correct. <laughs> Yay. Yay! You are correct. Because we a, care about our nuggets. Right, right? A user on Shitter posted a thread claiming McDonald's uses silicone oil to fry their McNuggets and uh, the post based on the perception that McDonald's along with other fast food chains use uh, that silicone anti-foaming agent, dimethyl polysiloxane uh, in their oil to fry food. But um, after 2016, McDonald's took it out because people found out about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> So they did. How dare point. the public find out? <laughs> yeah, it, the F, the FDA actually lists that as being one of the safe things if it's in a small enough amount. Hmm. Uh, but, it, but it's no longer used. Be- but we have silicone yeah. testicles, so volume. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, the cooking oil scandal is something that's going on in China right now. Wow. Uh, there's investigative report back. But from state-backed Beijing News uh, that last week said that they, these tankers are being used for both fuel and food, rock, food products like cooking Damn. oil, soaking oil, and syrup. Uh, they claim it's an open secret over there that these tankers don't even get clean. So the nuts. state is launching a probe 
We don't need yeah. no regulation. Yeah, That's a cover song, right? by you the way. Get rid of those. That's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's God. Terrifying. It's, it's scary. Oh, it is. It is. But luckily, you know, we've got the Chinese state investigating. No, it's wild because you you know I have the we tend to have this concept that in China they've got this iron grip on their economy mm-hmm. because they're not uh, laissez faire capitalism, mm-hmm. uh, but even they are having to deal with regulation issues. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they're not looking. Oil's oil. Oil's oil. <laughs> yeah, it's just you know, cooking <laughs> fuel for your car. No biggie, no biggie. It's body safe, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problems there. All right, Whew. one down. Next mm-hmm. question. One down. All right. One minute back on the clock. Either living near a Bitcoin farm causes migraine headaches, or Butt plugs were used as old tiny headache cures. <laughs> How do Ooh. you come up with these? <laughs> Ooh. Okay, where mm-hmm. are Bitcoin farms located? Everywhere. Uh, specifically, this one is in Granbury, Texas, but they are all over the world. And what is a Bitcoin farm? <laughs> a Bitcoin farm is a giant warehouse of computers and servers mm-hmm. uh, mining Bitcoin. Yeah, I don't get the whole Bitcoin thing. Like, I never even look. Mm. And they are energy hogs. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Okay. I'm going to say. Oh, God. Americans yeah. love a good sex related story, though. Don't Which we? Would they want mm-hmm. that? <laughs> they, got hmm. the butt plug. they did that's Yay! correct <laughs> well Yay! done Yay, Pancho. Pancho, i've redeemed the a 19th century set of rectal dilators was actually sold manufactured and sold as a headache cure also treated mm. insanity constipation and numerous other ailments it yeah. was who knew they had a multiple box applications multiple <laughs> applications that's why they're so popular the today. rectal dilators is a great band <laughs> by the way <laughs> but can you turn them can you turn it all the way up to 11 ron <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the other story mm-hmm. is from time.com uh there is a a bitcoin farm in Granbury, Texas mm-hmm. and they're having an issue with multiple, more than 40 people in the area have medical ailments linked that they are, that the doctors are linking to the Bitcoin mine, hypertension, heart palpitations, chest pain, vertigo, tinnitus, wow. migraines, and panic attacks. At least oh, 10 man. people went to urgent care or emergency room with these symptoms. Uh, they suspect it's the giant sound coming huh. from all of the copious, copious fans. Hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But they, they aren't, they aren't quite sure, but they know it started. And, you know, some, maybe some of it is uh, linked to uh, uh, group think the hysteria right. crowds, yes. you know, Once you but, hear it. Uh, so, several people who live really close to it, uh, they, they, they've shown like it violates town or town ordinances. So the, the Bitcoin, facility is changing to uh different cooling methods but yeah it is a gigantic complex oh anyway Sounds like bitcoin is a migraine right right okay last question bonus points here double wet food <laughs> double wet food all Pancho. right he, he's he's licking his lips okay <laughs> either an Iowa woman put out a PSA on not eating icicles in the winter as they might be riddled with bird poop. <laughs> or an Arizona man has collected over 8,000 pieces of fossilized poop. Wow. Oh, God. Fact check. Which was fact check? 
Um, where did you find the story on the bicycle? Uh, the a Sioux City bicycles. A Sioux City Falls <laughs> Fox affiliate okay. news station KMEG. Well, Fox, the you know they black check collection. That was a story first reported uh, on the AP okay. Associated Press. Okay. Hmm. I am going to say they fact checked the police collection. <laughs> I am sorry, that's oh, not correct. Darn. Oh, you were doing so good. A man in Williams, Arizona, mm -hmm. has opened what he's calling the Puseum <laughs> and showcasing <laughs> more than 7,000 of his species, fossilized species <laughs> collection. Not his personal species. Uh, he's doing God's work. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> if, if you're in the area and you want to check out some fossils, I mean, it's fossilized poop, so it's it's not dirty or filthy by any means. <laughs> uh -huh. Wow, um, that is that and, interesting. And the Iowa woman is meteorologist Katie Nicolau from the Sioux City Fox affiliate K KMEG. And she put out a video explaining it's a bad idea to eat icicles that hang from the side of the building because <laughs> it contains bird poop. I mean, uh, <laughs> the water melts off your roof, runs down the side of a building. Well, here's the thing. You know what else is on your roof? Bird poop, a lot of it. And the water picks it up and freezes it in the ice. You're eating poop. You're eating poop. She's I not was wrong. thinking we didn't have to fact check that one because it seemed pretty obvious to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that get, made it to Snopes to get fact checked. Yeah, Damn. but and Snopes confirmed it, right? Yes, it is true. Yeah, Snopes it is like, absolutely yeah, true. yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah, there's poop on your roof. We are right, that right. stupid. I mean, but thankfully, uh, you did get two out of three. Whew. Well done, Amber. Whew. Well done. I know you were you were really sweating it. I was, uh, man. That's gonna do it for fact chime. Everyone, join us next week where either I'm going to be too chicken to dance or I'm going to dance with some chickens. Ooh, this could be fun. Ooh, can't wait. We hope you that. had a good time. Maybe you learned a thing or two. I know I did. But we got to move on. It's time. Let's talk about some feel good news. Oh, we need to. After all of that. All of that. A call for a sip. Maybe even a hit. Join us for half coffee. And join us for half coffee. Okay, so two rare parrots from uh, an endangered, critically endangered species from native Bolivia. They're they're red fronted macaws. Mm. They just arrived at the Twycross Zoo in Leicester, England, Leicester, England, uh, and they are being paired together as part of a breeding program. There are only they there are fewer than three hundred of these Oof. birds left in the wild right now. Ooh, damn. Ooh, ouch. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And a Welsh Mountain Zoo and an Edinburgh Zoo. Uh, each donated one of their parrots, one of their red uh, fronted macaws for, as part, part of this, this effort. Um, so to, caring. to quote Rice McKee, uh, assistant bird curator, it's always an exciting day when a new animal arrives at a zoo, but being reunited was a really special moment because uh, Rice had worked at the Edinburgh Zoo previously. When when he hatched, it was the first time in over fifteen years that the species had been successfully bred at the zoo. So these guys are difficult to get to breed. Um, yeah. Continue the quote. So now to give him a home at Twycross Zoo, where he will continue the con conservation journey and hopefully breed more of this rare species. Momentous for me. Uh, they're very gorgeous birds too. Very gorgeous. Uh, if you think of that classic cartoon pirate parrot that goes on the shoulder that's got the rainbow mm -hmm. colors mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about here the red fronted macaw oh they, and they're beautiful they really are they're 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 just gorgeous rainbow birds why wouldn't you want one uh, hmm. 
Well, that's why they went extinct. So, it, you know. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> why wouldn't you want so one? So if you're ever if you're ever in Twycross, take a take a gander at the zoo and go say hi to this new pair of parrots, hopefully breeding pair. Uh let's uh let's any any opportunity to, to save a, a distinct species is Absolutely. one we have to take. Absolutely. And it warms my that's heart to win. see people doing doing the hard work getting it done that's that's a win yeah mm -hmm. sure all right sadly though <gasps> don't say it all all good things do have to come to an end hopefully not <laughs> critically Aww. endangered species but definitely this episode uh, <laughs> I, before we go i do need to thank trask industries keeping the mutant population at bay with zero desire for profit and power <laughs> zero thanks trask mm -hmm. zero uh, looks like we don't have any time left for the salad making tips that will change your life. What? Uh, I, I will confess, I, I completely lifted that one when I pulled up the news and was looking uh, at things to assemble the show. Uh, the headline was <laughs> Ina Garten's salad making tips that will change your life. No. You clicked and it. Did you I click thought it? to myself, there is. <laughs> I did not click it because uh. I was on a mission. Uh -huh. I didn't have time to dally on, on dumb <laughs> dalliances. Uh, yeah. But it I did immediately think, Dan, there is there are no salad tips that could change your life. Not a one. <laughs> Not a one. Really? Are you sure? <laughs> There's a lot and, of unless, out there that you can call ma salad. Ma yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> if Ina Garten's got some salad sex stuff that I haven't heard about that. <laughs> oh. or, or like, here's a I'm salad you can smoke. Yeah, I'm going to go find that article. <laughs> toss your salad. <laughs> oh, right. No, right. Ron, that's a different Ina Garten's that's salad different. tossing tips. We don't want that. Changed my life. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, before we go, I got to uh, give a shout out to science, congeniality, and the social contract, making society better than anarchy for many of the last thousands of years. Anybody got any final words, thoughts uh, oh gosh, before we go? All that. <laughs> yes, it's hard, hard to top that. I mean, gee. I think I'll go make myself a salad. <laughs> ah, ah, there you go. I think I'll go have Dan make me a salad. Uh, well, Jolon True, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, boom. Have a wonderful day, folks. If you had a good time with us, you know what to do. Tell someone that needs us. You, you can find us over at halfcocktails.com. We're on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. If you're in a giving mood, uh, find us over on Patreon uh, or visit uh, halfcocktails.com slash shop and find yourself some awesome branded merchandise. We'll have all those links in the episode description. Uh, thanks for stopping by now. Go out and be well. Now things are ending, it's time to go. No more to get through, thanks for listening, that's our show. Ain't affectation, oh, we're just leaving you half cocked. Half cocked, half cocked. We had a good time talking today. But even best times, eventually they fade away. Ain't adjuration, oh, we're just leaving half cut.